Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Igor Dodenko, and I'd like to start with uh, great uh, uh, with thank you, uh, with saying thank you for all our organizations, because uh, this uh, short uh, time the uh, PyCon Ukraine uh, take held in uh, Lviv, and the great, great effort uh, for whole organization team. And I right now uh, wearing the shirt from first Lviv Pi uh, meetup in 2012. In five years, the uh, Lviv uh, Py, uh, Python community grew up so quickly, so so great. So it's it's so it's so unu uh, un not, not unusual, so so great that our community uh, grows so fast and uh, the conference uh, conference gets so better and better. And today I'd like uh, to talk. Uh, uh, it's a completely same topic that uh, previous uh, <laughs> that the previous speaker told uh, you. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, GraphQL, uh, and I titled it as API Wars episode uh, X. Yeah, like a Star Wars and something like that. Uh, so uh, actually. Uh, I don't know what uh, exactly to say about the GraphQL after a previous uh, talk, uh, a previous speaker, because uh, the previous uh, talk was great. Yeah, you you see that how uh, how to use GraphQL, what uh, uh, tools uh, there are for GraphQL, how uh, GraphQL integrated with uh, Django via Graphene, etc. So what's to talk about? Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about first of all about client-server communication. Yeah, for web. I'm uh, not only Python, but React.js developer, so I have uh, some, uh, uh, some requirements uh, for uh, cl uh, client-server communication. I, I just need to write tools uh, to communicate my React components, uh, my front-end uh, uh, with back-end. And let's a uh, quick look how it's uh, done before. Yeah, so it starts all with SOAP. Yeah, I believe you know what, what it means. Uh, that's yeah, Palpatine is here. It's not. not uh, it's uh, it's very similar to how uh, how you feel yourself when it works with SOAP. You have all the power uh, in the world, but you need to, to understand how to use this power. Yeah, and XML RPC is uh, similar to SOAP. Yeah, it's uh, just a sh shorter version, lighter version of uh, SOAP, and uh, it's done by uh, same team of Microsoft developers. So it's pretty same technology. Yeah, but then, yeah, then the REST API. Yeah, REST API is uh, a new hope, uh, a new hope for e everyone uh, in uh, uh, in web development. Yeah, so if we if, if we talk about again five years ago, how how it uh, how it works five years ago. Five years ago, you don't have uh, React. Yeah, uh, you you have what? You have Backbone or maybe some Angular one. And for communicating with uh, uh, React, uh, sorry, sorry, with Angular Run or Backbone, you need something like REST API, and uh, that's, that that kind of REST API is not widely used in Python community. Yeah, so like Django REST framework or Django Test API is just not uh, built uh, when Django built itself. So it's uh, still uh, the Python community don't know how to. Uh, properly use uh, the REST API and the REST API itself. It's very different, uh, different ways of uh, REST API as, as as now. Yeah, right now we have Marshmallow for REST API. We have Raml. We have uh, Swagger. We have uh, a lot, a lot of tools. We have uh, JSON schema based REST APIs. A, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, tools for REST API. So yeah, like Anakin. Yeah, he knows a lot, and but. Uh, it completes with something very scary, something very messy. Uh, so uh, the guys in uh, Facebook uh, understand that, that problem. That uh, all, all that the previous speaker talked about, yes, it's uh, run the bounds uh, to uh, to uh, to backends. It needs to, to go uh, to backends uh, very frequently, uh, very big amount of times. So they decided uh, to solve the problems with a REST API design, yeah, and they introduced the gra GraphQL. So yeah, again, GraphQL describe your data, make uh, the query, and get predictable results. And main things here is get predictable results. So you always understand uh, what uh, you query and what you get. So this is a big biggest feature of GraphQL, and the uh, the, the simpler example is like uh, when you need. Uh, to have one endpoint uh, to serve your mobile API, for your uh, desktop API, uh, your uh, web API, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and all clients need a different amount of data, and you don't need to specify multiple endpoints or multiple uh, get switches or multiple uh, something uh, in in REST API. You have this by design in one endpoint in one uh, query. 
So uh, what else? Uh, so yeah, get many resources in one request. It's 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 a very very nice feature. You uh, you think you think uh, about it like oh, okay. What? What? Who cares? Yeah, who cares? I, I can get, uh, I can uh, make uh, 10, uh, 12, uh, 20 HTTP requests uh, for getting the data to uh, show on my uh, on my web page. But I, I don't know why. Why? Why doing that? Um, that much in, uh, that much request, uh, requests to get uh, the data that can be fetched with one with one request. Uh, also, it's a very nice feature that you can evolve your API without version, so you don't uh, have a, a problem with uh, REST API version system. Yes, yeah, so you need to specify all its versions and support them, etc., etc. So, uh, with Gra GraphQL, you like uh, rolling release of your API. Yeah, and. The main, the main feature is a uh, GraphQL built by JavaScripters and JavaScripters uh, like girls. Yes, they uh, love with eyes. So when you, when you, when you're pretty uh, and uh, uh, girl, maybe uh, maybe you li you be liked by girl. But uh, when you're not so so pretty, you need to uh, uh, to to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, describe yourself and uh, with powerful tools. I mean that's graphic GraphQL. Yeah, that's uh, uh, the, t the tool that uh, that that uh, understand uh, that first from first view you understand what you can do with your API. So you you don't need uh, how how it's how it's done in in the REST API world. Yeah, you need to generate uh, Swagger docs. Uh, then you need to serve Swagger docs. Then you need. Uh, uh, do something, do something, do something. Here you just like brew install GraphQL and uh, you've done. Uh, you just uh, uh, set up the endpoint, set up the HTTP headers uh, to uh, uh, f to request your API by some authorization header, and you've done. You've done, and you understand everything that you can do with your with your schema, with your uh, GraphQL uh, query. Then, if you if you want to prototype uh, the uh, some new uh, gra GraphQL uh, tool, you can. Do this with uh, PostgreSQL. So uh, the the idea is simple. Yeah, the idea is you have your data database, and you don't understand how exactly you want uh, to use uh, uh, the gra GraphQL with this database. Uh, do you need the uh, GraphQL for this exact database? So you can just uh, uh, take a look. Yeah, you just uh, you can just uh, uh, run the PostgreSQL with. Uh, a connection string to your database, and that's it. And uh, just to check out if the GraphQL is is the uh, uh, technology for you or not. Uh, so that's easy. And then you just can can do the uh, everything. Uh, and this uh, uh, the GraphQL uh, the post GraphQL generates a relay uh, supported schema, so you you can have uh, the support with uh, all all the uh, front front end tools uh, easily. Yeah, so in total, yeah, so wow, GraphQL, such a deal, uh, much production, uh, production. But uh, in reality, uh, in reality, that's not not uh, so so cool because uh, we are Python developers. Yeah, and um, if uh, we, if we've been JavaScript developers, uh, if that's been uh, JSCon or LvJS, uh, we're talking ri right now about Express GraphQL and how everything is easy uh, to combine the, our Mongo uh, database with uh, uh, Express uh, Express JS. But what to do if, uh, for some reason, the production guys or you just want to use GraphQL with Python? And what to do if you want to use the GraphQL with Python 3? Yeah, and what to do if you want to use the, uh, GraphQL with uh, Python and AsyncIO? So let's uh, let's talk about it. Uh, everything starts with uh, GraphQL and Python with GraphQL Core. So uh, this is, um, GraphQL Core is a library for parsing to solving the GraphQL queries. And then uh, in this org organization, the GraphQL Python that's uh, been mentioned uh, by Tim, there are a lot of a lot of tools. Yes, there are Graphene, Graphene Django for Django integration, for GraphQL framework, Graf uh, Graphene SQL Alchemy, f well, Flux, <laughs> Flask, <laughs> Flask uh, GraphQL. It's, very <laughs> it's my typo, sorry, <laughs> and and so on. So so a lot a lot of a lot of tools uh, already built in for uh, for integrates the GraphQL into your framework. Uh, but uh, let's see how it's, how, it's, uh, how it's done. So 
First of all, the GraphQL core is a port of uh, GraphQL JS to Python uh, and up to date with release 0.6. Uh, but the, uh, this is one uh, big problem already because uh, the latest release of GraphQL core is uh, 0.9.3. So uh, this is a release uh, that's uh, supported by GraphQL Core. It's uh, uh, half a year uh, passes from uh, past July. So it's already, de already uh, not, not deprecated, but already it's very uh, ancient. Yeah. Uh, second, uh, you need uh, to, uh, to create your, uh, to describe your data. Yeah? Uh, so you, you've seen the, that's very nice examples of how Graphene integrated with Django. It's uh, synt uh, syntax, uh, sugar, and uh, all, all, uh, so on. And uh, let's see how it works uh, in a nutshell. Yeah? So you need uh, to introduce the GraphQL schema. You need to introduce uh, the GraphQL uh, object type of, of query. Yeah? And you need to introduce some field that's, uh, of type of string that uh, return some hello world. Yeah, so this is a hello world in uh, GraphQL core. And this not looks uh, very nice, honestly. Yeah, so uh, let's add the, some database. And yes, uh, that's uh, even, even worse, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so uh, this is uh, an example for support uh, async PG, uh, the uh, uh, Postgres uh, driver uh, uh, write, written by Yuri Selivanov, IOHTP, and GraphQL core integration. Yeah, and everything uh, here looks uh, very complex. Yes, yeah, so uh, you need to introduce, first of all, you need to introduce your model, uh, your, your, your struct. Yes, yeah, then you need to introduce uh, some, some fields, and you need to introduce how to resolve these fields. And as of resolver, yes, yeah, this is a need to some, do some clo uh, closure for here to resolve by name. And here you can fetch the data from, from database. Yeah, and all, all the problems that, uh, again, to <laughs> told by our time, that's like n plus 1, uh, querying all the data in table, here is visible. Yeah, uh, and, and then you need to some, somehow to execute this query. Yeah, you need to uh, get together. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff to do, yeah? No, like, boilerplate if you, if you want uh, to connect the IOHTP, uh, the async PG, or IOPG, and uh, Graph, GraphQL core. <laughs> you need to do a, lo a lot of stuff, yeah? You need, to do, uh, you, you need to do a lot of stuff, and that that's uh, looks, like, very, very nice from one point of view, because also you need to, to take care about uh, how to parse the GraphQL query, yeah, all, all, this, all the stuff that's uh, written in uh, documentation of GraphQL. So the point is that it's, it's not very, very fancy, yeah? If, if we talk about like, some graphene that you uh, have some uh, URL resolver, uh, you connect it to your Django URLs and go on. But here is, yeah, it's not, 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 not so easy. But uh, uh, still, still, yeah, next you, you can add some uh, arguments uh, to your uh, GraphQL queries. Again, again, a lot of, a lot of stuff uh, to, uh, to write. And finally, yeah, you need to, finally you need to, to write some resolver for all, for all that stuff. Yeah, with async AOC is like uh, async, async IO, everything. Uh, yeah, and finally you can get some, some results. So that's, uh, that's not, not bad, but also not nice. It's some, some in between. Some in between because you need to do uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, you need to do a lot of stuff, and you, uh, you don't understand how to properly, uh, how properly to introduce, to descri uh, describe this data, yeah, how, where, to, uh, where to put uh, field uh, definitions, where to put uh, uh, schema definitions, uh, where to, how to... Uh, organize your uh, code base with uh, GraphQL. So that's uh, pretty, pretty uncom un uncommon way, because like in, uh, again, in, in REST uh, APIs, yeah, you have uh, all, all its uh, uh, best solutions how to, do, how to connect a flask, a flask with uh, a any REST API. But here you need to, you need to, to do something by, by yourself. You need to uh, introduce uh, this uh, support of Gra GraphQL by, by yourself. So it's not, not that easy. Uh, easier it uh, became when you start using Graphene, even without Jen Django. Yeah, uh, when you start using Graphene, Graphene is DSL for GraphQL, so it's uh, uh, things became um, 
more easier to read, uh, more easier to understand, and uh, as a result, more easier to use uh, for uh, multiple backend developers. Because if, if you want a backend developer, it's okay for you to do anything you, anything you want. You, you need to support only your code. But if any, anyone else in your team need to also support uh, what you, you've done, you need to be, uh, you need to use better t technologies, yeah? And here with, with Graphene, yeah, uh, everything became uh, easier. Yeah, you have some namespace with object type. Uh, you wrote how to resolve. You wrote how to, uh, what to do, uh, how, uh, how to um, list, uh, how to compose this list, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you've done it by yourself, but uh, it became easier because you use this uh, here OOP. Yeah, object-oriented uh, programming, and you uh, put everything uh, in, uh, in namespaces of uh, your queries. Uh, so, sorry. So uh, you have one uh, graphene qu query, one root query, and here you have the namespace of uh, all the fields that uh, can be resolved uh, by GraphQL, and uh, this, uh, like. Uh, uh, also, the, uh, then you need to, to uh, set up the schema and can the serve uh, the original uh, can serve uh, graph graphene schema uh, with a GraphQL core resolver. So you don't need to uh, make a new view. So this uh, view view function when you uh, await GraphQL uh, will work for graphene as well. So that's good. Uh, that's good, but uh, then we start uh, talking about some problems, yeah, with uh, not this uh, graphene tool or GraphQL tool, but uh, in general. The, the biggest problem here is that you need uh, to, uh, to describe, uh, to select all your data, yes, so you don't know uh, which exact data uh, the user uh, ask uh, the client ask for you, and you need to describe all fields, and then to resolve uh, the requested fields from all uh, available fields. Uh, then you mix the uh, that da database uh, business logic, uh, then s selecting data from database, uh, and uh, doing some extra stuff. Uh, it's every everything in in one place, and this is not not uh, it's coupled. It's very hard to, to use, and when you uh, in, in, uh, even in Graphene start uh, describing, for, for example, few schemas with uh, five, ten models, it uh, became messy, it became very hard uh, to use with it, uh, to use it. Yeah, so let's start talking about HICO. Uh, what, is, what is HICO? Uh, so first of all, what is the problem also with GraphQL cores? So N plus one? Yeah, because you need uh, to resolve uh, every time some new fields, because uh, you don't know where in, uh, in the graph you are right now. Or, uh, so uh, querying all the table fields, you need to understand current node context if you want to solve these this first uh, two problems. And the, the biggest problem with, uh, with Graphene and GraphQL for, for me itself, it's, it's, it's not very predictable uh, with async uh, we, uh, for, for some For some reason, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it can uh, just quit uh, from loop. Uh, it uh, cannot run uh, some results, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe in a few, in three months, because uh, we last time we tried to use Graphene in production for four months ago. Maybe it's it's already solved. Uh, but uh, from uh, the, 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 uh, the issues from GraphQL Core, this is still, I believe, the problem. Predictable work with uh, asyncio, predictable work with uh, executing queries in uh, asyncio event loop. And the biggest problem is that it is slow. So uh, when, I, when I say slow, that's like, uh, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, some requests per second, yeah, some bench benchmark driving development. So if, you, if, if we uh, do some REST API, for example, we get X. But if we do some, uh, completely the same with uh, the GraphQL core, with Graphene, uh, we get uh, X divided by two. So it's two, two X slower uh, by design because it needs uh, to do all this uh, type checking, uh, all this uh, uh, re resolving uh, re results uh, with uh, again with validating data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it it is slow. And let's uh, try to uh, fix some problems. And uh, again, uh, I uh, want to welcome you, Hiku. So Hiku, it's uh, again li library to design graph uh, APIs, but also uh, it's uh, 
flexible in result uh, serialization. Uh, Hiko, uh, can, uh, you can request the data in uh, GraphQL query, but uh, respond with some uh, protobuf, with, uh, uh, not only with JSON, but uh, with uh, other formats. And also, uh, it's uh, no data under phishing or over phishing. So Hiko understands uh, how, where, where, uh, what exact data need to be fetched uh, with uh, current uh, GraphQL query. And no n plus, uh, plus one problem by design. And uh, it also implements the uh, concept of uh, separating the database, uh, database logic and business logic. It was, uh, separate the concept when, uh, where you need to query your database and uh, where you uh, need to do something with your data from database. database yeah. And uh, let's look uh, how, how it looks. So first of all, it uh, looks uh, not like uh, graph uh, graphene, but uh, more like GraphQL core. So you need to, do, uh, to have some root, and you need to, do, uh, to have uh, some fields. Yeah, and you need to, to have some, some resolver. Yeah, it's uh, pretty similar to GraphQL core, I, I, I must say. And then uh, when we introduce uh, the GraphQL, uh, the, sorry, uh, the Hiku low-level graph, yeah, uh, we, we have some magic. But here, we, you see, we selected only the slugs. We select not all the data from, from teams, but we select only primary key from the database. And Hiku then understands what next fields need to be queried. So we, uh, instead of n plus 1 queries, we made only two queries for all the data that have uh, been in, in, uh, in gra GraphQL query. And uh, in the, that's, uh, the, uh, so you don't need uh, to select all the data from, from database. And how it looks uh, with uh, execution, yeah, if, if, you, if we're talking about IOHTP. So it's, uh, for me, it's, even it uh, have more code, uh, but it's uh, more predictable. Because when we work with uh, GraphQL, GraphQL have some magic GraphQL function. And we expect the results from, from there. And uh, GraphQL function uh, return uh, execution result that contains data and errors in case of errors. So it don't uh, raise any errors. So you need, if, 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 one, if you want to do some uh, logging, you need to, to start with if. And we all, we all know that uh, if we start, uh, uh, start uh, making some logging uh, in errors by if, it's very, very bad design. And here, if some, uh, uh, something wrong happens, uh, you just can try accept it and then uh, return uh, the uh, exception to the, your client and lock any, anything you, you need here about uh, the error itself. So even if you uh, have uh, more lines, uh, to, uh, more, more lines to, to write, uh, you have more predict pre predictable results. So you can like parse uh, the query, uh, read the query, execute, and denormalize da data uh, due to your uh, necessity. So in, in our case, it's uh, been just JSON, but you can, again, uh, then uh, serialize this data as you need. So uh, Hiku uh, allows, allows you to uh, select uh, how to communicate with your uh, client, even if it's not a web client like a React component, maybe it's uh, some uh, other system, maybe some, it's some other backend. So it's uh, by design made that, uh, to use uh, GraphQL not only uh, with client-server communication, but even for server-server communication. You can uh, use the uh, Hiku queries for it, because you can here serialize data as you need. It can be not JSON. You can uh, put this data in some other. Uh, in some uh, in some other serializer, yeah. And in Giant itself, yeah, it's uh, again it's uh, diff different uh, of different how we execute the query. So execu executor uh, for uh, you know, for GraphQL core and Graphene, it's like not direct executor. You just pass the uh, executor class, and the executor class somehow call it in. Uh, uh, the, this magic uh, GraphQL fu function, and uh, here you just have the, your uh, Hiku en engine, engine, and then you just execute it. So again, it's more about predict uh, predictability. It's more about uh, what you want uh, from uh, what you get. So this concept again, again, it's 
you have to, uh, to write uh, more, more code, but it's, uh, this uh, one uh, view, it can be shared between your uh, projects or even can be uh, done as uh, some general uh, view and uh, you can uh, release the IOHTP HICO, for example, and that's it. Uh, you, you'll have your library uh, to execute uh, HICO, HICO queries. And then again, uh, let's talk about uh, high-level graph. So you need to decouple your business logic uh, from the base layer. Uh, it's, it's, again, on, on my examples, it's not a very big deal yeah, where to put uh, business logic. Because you, you can put the business logic in your models, like in, in Django. Yeah, in Django, you can do some properties. Uh, you can do some uh, functions uh, right in your uh, Django model. But I'm not believe that it's, it's, it's good, uh, good design. It's a good idea. And uh, similar here, here in HICO, we have one uh, low-level graph that uh, understands how to uh, work with uh, data, how to query the data in database, and we have the high-level graph to somehow, to somehow uh, combi combine the data from, from the results, to somehow to uh, re resolve the data how client, client needs. And if uh, we talk about uh, implementation details, so we need to implement the subgraph from low uh, from low level graph, and uh, here the implement uh, is easier uh, easier uh, business logic. Easier business logic here is renaming the field. So originally the name uh, na uh, the field in dot database named named uh, with uh, camel case, and here uh, sorry with snake snake case, and here it named uh, with uh, camel case. So it's the easier, easiest uh, example of uh, decoupling your database uh, and uh, business, business logic. Yeah, and, and, and on execution, all you need uh, just uh, to set uh, to execute the high-level graph, and that's it. Uh, every other, other code in your execu execution uh, is uh, the same. And uh, I also want to talk uh, very little about client-side overview. So uh, again, Relay already mentioned by Artem, but you don't need to, to use the Relay at all. You can use the fetch. Uh, you don't need to do some, something uh, very uh, to, to try GraphQL. You don't need to first to, to, like, to install the Apollo or install a Relay. You can start with fetch, and fetch right now is in all modern browsers. So you can just... Uh, Try to doing uh, some queries right from from your browser, and that's it. All you, all you need to to, to fetch in data from your GraphQL. Uh, if if you want, uh, if you if you don't, uh, if you want to some more complicated uh, example, I um, I'd like uh, to notice about Apollo, because Apollo it's a different concept, uh, it's lighter concept than the Re Relay itself. It's uh, the concept of uh, uh, here, here is very visible. Yeah, uh, uh, to connect your uh, React uh, components uh, with uh, via GraphQL. So you connect uh, the GraphQL query that uh, uh, executed here with your React component, and React components get only needed props, only needed props uh, for your components. So you just have easier solution than Relay, because Relay itself, it's uh, not so easy. So Relay creates the containers on top of React components. And in some cases, in some cases, Relay have a lot of uh, things you might uh, not need, like uh, pagination by offset, uh, by, uh, sorry, paginated by cursor. Maybe you want to paginate by limit offset. But in Relay, you cannot use it, because a Relay uh, model is not like that. A relay model is just uh, uh, have this uh, cursor, and you need to, to paginate your data by cursor. Maybe you don't need nodes. Maybe you don't need uh, edges. And Apollo uh, allows it. So when when you uh, when you start designing your uh, your client, maybe you you just need to look to Apollo first, and only then to relay. Yeah. And finally, and finally about the problems. So problems itself, the biggest problem uh, for me is that uh, it is slow. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, the problem with slowness is that it uh, requires a lot of code execution that with REST API you don't need, because in REST API you don't, uh, you sometimes you have the, yeah, this swagger schema that you can uh, then you need to validate it, but sometimes you don't have this validation layer, and so, uh, in GraphQL you cannot skip the validation layer, and 
you understand, you just add the, uh, many, many uh, validation checks for all the data that you requested. And all that is just calls, 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 calls. And again, the, the numbers, if with uh, some static, static data, so for static data, uh, IOHTP requests uh, 8,000 requests uh, per second. It's data, hello, hello world. Uh, it's inner uh, dict. Uh, with uh, Hiku, it's 250,000 uh, 250, requests per second. And with GraphQL or Graphene, it's around 1,050, uh, 20, uh, or sorry, 250. So uh, 1,250 uh, requests per second. So it's like a six uh, times slower on some static, not database uh, uh, related stuff. And we, if we're talking about database, it's two times slower. And if you need the high load, so high load is there, GraphQL is there. It's not, uh, right now, it's not uh, intersected. We hope the biggest problem right now in uh, parsing the GraphQL query itself, it's written on Python. And maybe if uh, someone uh, read, uh, writes this uh, GraphQL query uh, pars uh, parsing on something like Cyton or uh, maybe uh, just use some uh, C, uh, uh, just connect some GraphQL, uh, lib GraphQL. Uh, maybe it's, uh, it's easily gain the productivity. It's completely the same uh, thing as, as, as being with uh, Asyncio and UV loop. Yeah, Asyncio is slow, UV loop is, uh, uh, is fast, and right now Asyncio is also fast. Because uh, uh, it, be it became all the ideas uh, from, from UV loop and integrated uh, into uh, the, main, uh, the main library, the standard library. Maybe the, the same will happen with GraphQL, but right now this is, uh, this is not, not yet there. Second, it's not, not a big problem, but it is endorsed by JavaScript's community, and it means that uh, JavaScript community have completely the same, uh, completely the different uh, server implementation. Uh, JavaScript community, as, as I said, they have uh, the uh, 0.9.3 version. It's like uh, they um, on top of Python realization in uh, half half a year. So so they uh, going forward without the Python community. So it's and Python community need to get uh, all, all the new uh, ideas from from that community from Java, from JavaScript community. So it's not a big problem like that JavaScript community is bad or JavaScript is uh, bad engineers, but we need uh, to replicate all that's uh, done by uh, JavaScript. -ers. We need to replicate it, and that's, we need to replicate how, because they implemented it it's not in C or C++. They implemented it in JavaScript, so what? We need to run the, uh, the code in uh, V8, so. And uh, again, uh, the problem with Graphene, uh, the problem with GraphQL core, that it's originally designed for synchronous, uh, synchronous uh, frameworks. They're not designed by, uh, uh, for uh, async, for IOHTP uh, or other uh, frameworks. And uh, honestly, in, in we, we, uh, we're using uh, the IOHTP in production, and it works. So we want to use something that uh, also works and maybe also the standard, but the, right now, as I said, the uh, standard, the async executor in GraphQL is not predictable, and we cannot use it in, in production. Yeah, but, but conclusion, it's uh, still uh, not, not, uh, not so sad. Uh, I believe the uh, GraphQL core is a very good uh, tool uh, for, exactly, uh, for prototype and write a business logic for uh, backend. Uh, and I believe even it's better for prototype because uh, GraphQL uh, with this post GraphQL and other tools uh, that are done by JavaScript community has a lot of a lot of tool, a lot of uh, things covered already, so you can start easily. You can start with like uh, two command line commands. Uh, you can start uh, doing some backend. You, you can start and you can understand where the problems with your database logic, where the problems uh, with your uh, <laughs> like <coughs> mutations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's uh, it can be done very easily, and uh, then with the right tools, you can uh, very easily uh, to write the business logic itself, because uh, all, all the data, in in any way, will be typed. So you you will understand uh, how you will communicate with uh, the client. So for me, it's it's great great point, because it's. Uh, 
it's very, very nice to have some, some tools uh, to simplify your uh, work that you've done uh, every, every day. And uh, for me, again, as a front-end and back-end engineer, with GraphQL Core, I have better communication with front-end and back-end. It's, it's just uh, even not, not, not a question, because uh, <laughs> we understand better which components need which uh, uh, props, which uh, components in, in, uh, I'm talking about in React methodology, uh, how to communicate, uh, <laughs> what needs to be fetched. Uh, in which views I need to, to do uh, something uh, with my data, how, how to fetch this data, how to mutate this data. Uh, GraphQL, uh, GraphQL just uh, helps me. GraphQL just a uh, very nice and very flat road, uh, flat way to do this. And finally, it just works. Yeah, yeah maybe uh, you will need to spend uh, not five, but uh, 15 or 20 minutes uh, to one time uh, set up the GraphQL endpoint, but, but then that's it. All you need ju then just in any, in any way, if, you, if we're talking about REST API, if we're talking about GraphQL, when you some, something uh, changes in your data, database layer, you will, for some, uh, you will need to replicate it in your API. So with GraphQL, it's very easy. It's very predictable, and uh, I just uh, I hope that you're interested in it, and maybe to try even in your some small small uh, project because it just works. And that's it uh, for GraphQL. And if you have some questions, please go ahead. Thank you for great talk. Uh, I have a question about uh, gRPC and Drift. Did you try it, uh, or and can you compare with GraphQL? Mm, that's a very, very good question. Uh, uh, right now, uh, we even uh, try to uh, combine the GraphQL and uh, gRPC. So, for uh, as I said, the Hiku. Uh, allows you to uh, respond with uh, gRPC port above, so it's 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 very very compar comparable. Mm, I believe I, I, I right now not uh, deep into this technology, but I, I can connect you with our uh, architecture uh, architecture. Yeah, so we can you can t talk about. It. But it's very very comparable. We 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 try to combine all these uh, technologies uh, in uh, in one in yeah, it was com combine these technologies. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I have, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have one question about, uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, graphene, uh, I'm not sure if it's graphene core or uh, is mainly designed with the uh, idea of synchronous calls, but uh, for example, if it was uh, initially JavaScript community, uh, like Node.js and so on, Express, they are mainly rely on asynchronous work. Uh, so. Why? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's true. Yeah, they uh, have promises, uh, but that like I don't know. That's promises that just get uh, JavaScript promises a, a and get it into uh, Python. That is just replicate JavaScript promises into the Python. They don't use uh, async await at all. They don't use the principle of asynchronous how it's done in Python. They just use the principle how it done asynchronous code done in uh, JavaScript, so that's not 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 a very good solution for, for me because JavaScript and Python work with not not the same. Okay, thank you.